your lesson. You may have heard these words before, but I'll teach you what they really mean. Go beyond! Plus! Hey, what is up my fellow Beyonders? Plus Ultra James here coming at you with another video from Go Beyond Comics. I hope you guys are having an awesome day, a blessed day. Today, you guys, we are covering the final chapter of the origin of the mighty Megatron. So if you have not watched any of the chapters before this, links are in the description box down below, or you'll see a link pop up right here. Now with that out of the way, let's get right into it. So, the issue takes place right where we left off, with Starscream seemingly betraying Megatron. The Autobot security forces escort him away, and they take him before the Kaon Council, where the assembled bots here, I'm assuming our senators, read out this huge list of charges against him. And I like that Starscream here is being a smartass. Like, his reply to this laundry list of charges is, nobody's perfect, with a nice little smirk on his face. The council says that he risked much coming to them and asks why he asked for an early hearing. And this is where we learned that this was all a part of Megatron's plans, which is not surprising. We knew Starscream wasn't betraying him. Starscream is basically here to deliver a message, and he says to the council, through your own interests, you created this. You brought us here. You made this happen. All we did was give it a badge. And after hearing this, the council orders Starscream to be taken away, but Starscream then pulls out both his arm cannons, pointing them at the, at the senators here, saying, I don't think so. And then Starscream and Soundwave wipe out the entire council and etch the Decepticon symbol on the view screen. Like, this was so sick. Starscream then leaves to continue the plan, and we see the next step in Megatron's master plan here is Starscream blasts open the prison in order to free Megatron and the other gladiators. But Megatron says to Starscream to release not just them, but everyone in a prison cell. That today is the day they harness the power of k -On. Soundwave then provides armaments and badges to everyone. And Starscream then introduces Megatron to Megatron's classic arm-mounted fusion cannon, which looks so badass. Megatron then tests it out and he blasts a hole in the wall. And this blast here just looks like Vegeta's Gallic gun. Like it was sick. Megatron orders his fellow Decepticons to fall on the Autobots as predators do. Show no mercy, all of Kaon burns that Cybertron's era is ending. We then go to a vessel filled with Cybertron's high class, and it quickly comes to an end when Skywarp and Thundercracker fire upon the vessel, causing it to crash below in the city, destroying an incredible mount on the way down. As k burns, Sentinel Prime and the other Autobots are fighting to defend the city from the Decepticons, but they're losing. The Decepticons have caused massive damage, jam communications, and they refuse to give an inch of ground. Sentinel Prime realizes with his options running out that he'll have to deploy his assortment of firepower called the Apex System. He orders his soldiers to hold the line while he falls back to retrieve it. On his way to retrieve it, he's blocked by this Decepticon, and Sentinel Prime requests entrance into the Apex facilities but is denied access because he doesn't have council approval. So Prime decides to blast through, not only through this bot, but through the facility entrance in order to get in. Like, I love Sentinel Prime. This guy is just vicious. We then go to Soundwave, who meets with his boss. And his boss, to no surprise, is Senator Ratbat, who's killed his fellow senators here, who disagreed with the reallocation of city funding and the backing up of the city state data archives to a data cube. We then kind of get a big reveal here where Ratbat remit admits that he was behind all the chain of events that led to k -On burning. He aided Megatron's cause by having Soundwave supply arms. He was also the one who arranged for Megatron to be removed 
from the mining operation and even though it's gone too far now that Megatron's forces have destabilized the area, he'll use the cube and context to move on. So Senator Ratbat really is the cause of all this chaos here, which is not surprising because the issues we've seen so far have given us glimpses of him manipulating things behind the scenes and utilizing his power as Senator for his own benefit. As Ratbat leaves thinking he's won, out of nowhere Soundwave then shoots Ratbat blasting right through his chest. He takes Ratbat's ill-gotten gains in order to use it for his new boss's war. And freaking takes his Spark 2 and seals it inside his cassette body frame. Like this was awesome, this was just sick. Soundwave not only takes his ill-gotten gains, but it takes his spark too. But anyways, as Megatron orders his Decepticons to find the front line, a huge explosion occurs. Megatron discovers the that explosion was caused by Sentinel Prime, and he is inside this colossal suit of the Apex armor, and my god, I already loved how Sentinel Prime looked without this armor, but now with this armor, he is just the coolest, most badass looking bot I've ever seen. Sentinel Prime confronts Megatron and Megatron calls Sentinel Prime out telling him to come out of that armor, face me like a gladiator. And Prime replies with a huge blast from his apex armor. Sentinel Prime thinking Megatron is dead, you know, radios to the other bots, um, the Autobots that he's created an opening in the enemy lines to rally on him. But he learns that he spoke too soon. What Megatron does next is so vicious. He uses the, this bot named Hound, his body as a bludgeon to shatter Prime's Apex Armor helmet. Then the real battle begins, Megatron versus Sentinel Prime. Megatron punches and blasts Prime back, telling him he intends to make him suffer, that this is the end of his ways and the beginning of his. As the battle continues to rage on, Prime asks Megatron what he intends to do with his little gang. And Megatron, gaining the upper hand, says he will create desolation and call it peace. Their battle continues until Megatron is almost knocked over a cliff. Prime then lifts him up to deliver the final blow, but Megatron stabs him in the throat, and they ended up falling together, and they land in a crater. Megatron tells Prime that everything he's called him and his Decepticon brethren is true. They are all those things and worse, that everything must change and whoever stands in his way, Primus help them. Sentinel Prime tries to reply saying in his broken voice box here that it doesn't matter and Megatron just says it'll matter when they see what I've done to you. The Autobots finally able to get through those jam communications and make contact with Iacon are able to get Autobot reinforcements who arrive in time just to find their leader's beaten, broken, and presumably dead body lying in a crater. Prowl then orders a retreat, saying that's it for Kaon that they're pulling out. As the sun rises, Soundwave asks Megatron, since he has his army and has taken Kaon, what is next? And Megatron replies here, saying they are spooled by choice except one. From this day forward, they are Decepticons. And we see here Megatron having made a throne from the remains of Prime's Apex armor, sits down and he says he has a few ideas for what's next. And this is where the Great War has begun. And that is the end of the origin of Megatron, my fellow Beyonders. Overall, I enjoyed this story. You got Megatron's origin, the rise of the Decepticons, you saw the, the corruption that was within Cybertron and the Senate. Really, my only critique is I wish we saw the turning point. The turning point when the character says, this is my purpose, this is what I want to do. I wanted to see where Megatron came up with the idea of not just being a miner or a gladiator, but instead being the leader of this rebellion, this cause that would shake Cybertron to its core. That's the one thing I feel like was missing. But anyways, 
I don't know what to cover next, you guys. Let me know in the comments down below. Should I cover, you know, the spotlight of Ultra Magnus? or prime or do you guys know if there's an origin of optimus prime with chapters um, i'm gonna do some research but let me know in the comments down below if you guys know what you would like to see next other than that if you guys enjoyed the video hit that like button i would greatly appreciate it comment down below your thoughts on megatron's origin and subscribe to the channel i would greatly appreciate that as well other than that have an awesome day Peace, love, and blessings to you and your families. And always remember every day to go beyond plus ultra. See you guys.